let's sing together. Well, Jesus, Jesus is the reason why I sing. He is the reason why I sing. Jesus is the reason why I sing. Well, I sing. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. Jesus is the reason why I sing. He is the reason why I sing. Jesus is the reason why I sing. He is the reason why I sing. Jesus is the reason why I sing. Well, I sing. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. Jesus is the reason why I sing. Well, I had a song of pain, full of distress and shame, and a life that had no harmony. Oh, but when I experienced the power of Jesus, his love gave a sweet melody. He is the reason why I sing. Jesus is the reason why I sing. He is the Jesus is the reason why I sing. Well, I sing. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. Jesus is the reason why I sing. He is the reason why I sing. Jesus is the reason why I sing. He is the reason why I sing. Jesus is the reason why I sing. I sing. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. Jesus is the reason why I sing. Till Jesus stepped in and gave me peace within He is the reason why I sing. Jesus is the reason why I sing. He is the reason why I sing. Jesus is the reason why I sing. I sing. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. Jesus is the reason why I sing. Well, I had a song of pain, full of distress and shame, and a lie. I had no harmony. Oh, but when I experienced the power of Jesus, His love gave a sweet melody. He is the reason why I sing. Jesus is the reason why I sing. Oh, yes, He's the reason why I sing. Jesus is the reason why I sing. Well, I sing. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. Jesus is the reason why I sing. He is the reason why I sing. Jesus is the reason why I sing. Well, I sing. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. Jesus is the reason why I sing. Well, I sing. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. Jesus is the reason why. Song the main line, telling what you are. Oh, Jesus, song the main line, telling what you are. Oh, yeah. Jesus, song the main line, telling what you are.
you'd worship him in this house tonight how many of you came to receive from the Lord I want you to, if you will just to lift your hands in this building as we enter a time of worship I want you to just let the Lord have his way in your life
Months ago, we were in the hospital. Michelle had, had a heart attack. We had no idea she had any kind of heart condition. 4.30 in the morning. 5 o'clock, they were to come get her, crack her chest, and do open heart surgery. I had already prayed with her. She took her phone out and she turned this song on. And we held hands and we worshiped the Lord because all of our life he has been faithful. Hallelujah. We didn't know what the next few hours held, but what we did know is it did not matter what the next few hours held in the natural. We had a God who was on our side and was going to watch over her and take care of her. Hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you, I can't sing this song today without it stirring something deep in my soul. So you know what? The only way that song could be any better is if we do it again. Can we do it one more time? Let's do it again. Hallelujah. Come on, church. All your life, he's been faithful to you. When you didn't even deserve it, he was oh faithful to you. Life. When you were walking away from him, he was faithful to you. Hallelujah. Faithful to your children. Come on, worship him. Just a few years back <laughs> that I was leading worship <clears throat> and all of a sudden I just kind of felt very strange and all I remember really someone grabbing me and taking me out the middle aisle and I remember them laying me on the floor in the, the little room
when the EMTs got there, uh, they had to resuscitate me at least five times from in that room to when I got to Mercy Hospital. I'd actually died five times. But when I woke up in the, in the hospital bed, I wasn't aware of what had ever happened because I believe <laughs> the Lord just let me sleep for a while. And I remember the little EMT coming to visit me. <laughs> and he walked in. He said, I just had to come see a miracle lying in that bed. <laughs> And I tell you, the Lord has been so, so good to me <laughs> that I just want to tell the, the world, He is faithful. He is so faithful. I don't care what you're going through tonight. You may be facing the darkest hour and you've got a smile on your face, but I'm here to tell you, God is faithful and He's reaching out to somebody in this room tonight to remind you that he loves you, he cares about you, he can take away all the addiction, he can take away all the problems, he can take away all the marital problems, he can take away the sin in your life because God is a faithful God and he's reaching out to somebody in this room tonight. Give it to God because he has the answer. He is a faithful I just come back from preaching a camp meeting in Louisiana and I thought I had the flu and I went to the doctor and that day the doctor sent me to the ER and Mike Roberts sits back there and he walked with me through this and he can tell you this is the truth that day I ended up in ICU I should have died my blood pressure was over 300 on the top they put me in ICU. They said that he don't have a whole lot of hope. I was in end stage kidney failure. I weighed 585 pounds. 585 pounds. I've lost 350 pounds. I do not have kidney failure. I do not have kidney failure. I left the hospital with $135,000 worth of debt, but I stand in front of you today, and it's all been paid for. My God has been faithful. My God is a faithful God. He is the God that you read about in the Bible. He is the God of Abraham, of Isaac, of Jacob. He split the
tell Dan, raise your hand, Danny Eversall. He's in camouflage. You may not be able to see him, but he's standing right here. A few months ago, he received a report from the doctor. They told him he had three different kinds of cancer. He called me, his wife called that day and said, please have the church pray. They told him to go home and get your affairs together because you're not going to live much longer. We came on a Tuesday night and we began to pray and we prayed, we anointed that man with oil. Somebody touched the hem of his garment. He went back to the doctor two days later and today he has absolutely zero traces of cancer in his body. He has all He's been faithful. If you need a healing tonight, you ought to lift your hands and receive it. If you need deliverance, you ought to lift your hands and receive it. He's faithful. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Isn't the Lord in this place? I said, isn't the Lord in here tonight? Isn't he here? Isn't he here? Praise God. I want to tell you what happens when you start sharing what God does. When you start sharing what God has done, when you start sharing that, See, every man was dealt a measure of faith, but when you start sharing what the Lord has done, that faith starts rising up. <laughs> I'll use the analogy like this. If I was going to grow bananas and go in the banana business, I would not go to Alaska and buy 160 acres and plant bananas. In order to grow bananas in Alaska, what I would have to do is I would have to plant, I would have to build me a hot house. I would have to build a hot house in Alaska in order to properly grow bananas. And when you grow a hot house, see, you can control the thermostat. You can control the temperature. You can make the thermometer go up, the, the temperature go up. Well, when you start talking about what God has done and the goodness of God, and you start sharing testimonies, what you're doing is you're building a hot house. And, and, and faith starts rising up. It gets higher and higher and higher. And I'm going to tell you what it does. It creates an atmosphere for belief. Last I checked, we were still called believers. I know sometimes maybe we get lost in it and we really don't believe like we should believe. But when you start talking about God showing up when the doctor says you're going to die and God showing up when it looks like you're going to go bankrupt and you get out of debt, and God showing up when the doctor says you're dead and brings you back to life. I don't know about you, but I'm going to tell you, it makes the temperature rise inside of me. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you're here in this place and, and you need a healing, you need a healing touch. You need a healing touch. You need a bona fide miracle. You need a bona fide healing miracle. Then what I need you to do is to step out in the aisle. I don't want you to come up here. I want you to just step out in the aisle where you're at right now. You need a miracle. Just step out in the aisle. Just do it right now. You need a miracle. 
If you need a miracle, step out in the aisle. There's people stepping out right back here. People stepping out right here. Now, 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 but before we do anything else, Pastor Gary, I want you to come up here. Brother Danny, I want them to help you, and you come right up here. Brother, come on. Come on. Come on, Pastor. Come on up here, brother. Who else was there? Pastor Sean, you come right up here. Now, now look right here for just a minute. I want you to look at these men right here. Look at these guys right here. You remember what they told you. I want you that are needing a miracle, I want you to look at these men right here. You remember what they told you. We're believers, right? We believers? The Bible says that he's no respecter of persons. That tells me that he won't do it for Gary and not do it for you. He won't do it for Sean and Michelle. Then he won't do it for any of these and not do it for you. All we got to do is believe. Because, because the Holy Spirit is here, and because we've honored him, and because we have told of his goodness. I can, I can read you some scripture real quick. Hold on just a second. No, nope, no. Nope. Psalm 77, 11 says, I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will, will remember your wonders of old. Because the Holy Ghost has moved in here and because we have gave him room and because we've recognized him and because we've started testifying of his goodness, guess what? We've created a hot house. We've created a hot house. You can get, you can grow anything you want to grow in here tonight. Because you and the Holy Ghost are controlling the thermostat. You need healing? Who needs healing? Who needs a miracle? Those of you that are by these, go to them right now and lay your hands on them right now. But if you can't get to them, then stretch your hands toward them. And begin to proclaim. Begin to declare the healing power of God over them. The Father Lord. Father Lord, we declare. We declare healing in the name of Jesus. We declare the disease must die in the name of Jesus. We curse pain to the very root in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that by your stripes, Lord, we are healed. You were wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon you, and by your stripes, Lord, we are healed. We proclaim it right now. right now if you got your healing you ought to celebrate right now if you received your healing you ought to give him some praise right now
Put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus. Anybody in this place ever been delivered? I said, anybody in here ever been delivered? Jesus. The God I serve is a delivering God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He's a healing God. And I want to tell you right now before we're seated that he loves you. That Jesus loves you. It doesn't matter if you don't have two nickels to rub together. He loves you. You may have all the money in Crawford County. He loves you. You may have done some big crazy sin before you got here tonight. He loves you. But I want to tell you this. We're not leaving here the same way that we came. We're not leaving here the same that we came. I want you to look at your neighbor before you sit down, and I want you to tell them, if you really mean it, I'm not leaving the same way that I got here. I'm not leaving the same way that I came. God's fixing to do something big. God's fixing to do something big. Tell them, come on, tell them like you mean it. Listen, don't sit down until you tell two or three people. God is fixing to do something big. God is fixing. Hey, somebody in the front, yell at somebody in the back and tell them, hey, 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 back there in the cheap seats. God is fixing to do something big. You can't hide from him in the back. Woo! God's fixing to do something big. Come on. Some of you believe it. Enough of you believe it. The rest of you is going to believe it by the time I'm done. And God is going to do something big. I love your pastor. You've got a great, great pastor. This is a great, fabulous, fabulous church. And praise God, I'm privileged to be here tonight. And this is my home church. I was raised here in this church, as many of you know, and it's an honor and a privilege to be in this pulpit. And my Lord, I've got so many great memories of just God doing so much in me and my family and my friends and y'all. I still got images, the stuff that happened around these altars and different things and just great, great memories. Praise the Lord for great, great memories. And I love you guys, and I'm so glad to be here. But I want to talk to you on a serious note tonight. I want you to go to John chapter 11. John chapter 11. I've got a word from the Lord. And, I, 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 and God loves you just enough to send a donkey by like me to bring a message to somebody like you that is in this place tonight that needs to hear this. In John chapter 11, I want to start in verse 7. And really it's going to help you if you got your smartphone or you got your Bible. It's going to help you so much if you can follow along. It really is. I'm telling you. Because I'm going to read some scripture. And I'm going to lay some stuff out. And I don't think you've probably ever heard anything like I'm going to talk to you about tonight. 
Glory. Glory to God. John chapter 11, verse number 7, if you have it, say amen. amen. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, lately the Jews sought to stone you. Are you and you are going to go there again? Jesus answered. He said, are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. These things he said, and after that, he said to them, our friend Lazarus sleeps. But I go that I may wake him up. Then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get well. However, Jesus spoke of his death. But they thought that he was speaking about taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Then verse 16, I want you to pay special attention here. This is where I want to get your attention tonight. I'm going to tell you that God is fixing to do a work in somebody here tonight. Then Thomas, who is called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, which is called twin unto his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Let's look at verse 8. Let's back up and look at verse 8. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, lately the Jews sought to stone you. You and you are going there again? His disciples are saying, Master, what is going on, Rabbi? What's going on lately? They're trying to kill you, and you're ready to go there again? Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, to his disciples, this is verse 16, again, that I want you to pay attention to, let us also go with him that we may die with him. We're going to stop right there for just a moment. Thomas wants to go with him so that he can die with him. Yet for 2,000 years, we have indicted this man by calling him Doubting Thomas. Find the doubt for me, if you would, in verse 16. Let us go with him to Judea that we may die with him. All the other disciples are saying, what are you doing? They seek to stone you, Jesus. 
They want to kill you, Jesus. If, if you go there, they're after you, Jesus. They're liable to kill you if you go there. But, but Thomas, who we've labeled, mislabeled, doubting Thomas, is saying, I'll go with you. If they kill you, then they're going to have to kill me too, Jesus. Doubting Thomas is not his name. That's the title of my message tonight. Doubting Thomas is not his name. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, Doubting Thomas is not his name. How many people do we mislabel? How many people have we mislabeled in this life? They messed up one time. They did something one time 20 years ago, and we're still calling them by what they did back then. Come on, somebody. I'm not the only one in here that's been guilty of it. We've all been guilty of it, labeling people. Oh, they're a troublemaker, because one time they didn't agree with the whole bunch. Come on. Oh, they're a rebel. They're a rebel. They're a rebel. Because they didn't side up with you and your little clan on everything. Come on. Doubting Thomas is not his name. And I want you to see, here's what most people don't have a revelation of. People don't have a revelation of the issue that produced his inability to believe. Get this, it was the pain of losing Jesus. It was the pain of losing Jesus. Hear me, it was the pain of losing Jesus, not the doubt, not the doubt in his reality. It was the pain in losing Jesus, not the doubt in his reality. Let me explain it. I want you to imagine this with me. Can you imagine seeing this man named Thomas encountering this man named Jesus who changed, radically changed his whole life having his whole world, his whole life absolutely turned upside down, revolutionized, absolutely tore up from the floor up, absolutely rocked by this man named Jesus. The idea that this guy would actually let Thomas follow him around, go with him. He leaves his family, he leaves his job, he leaves his relationships, he goes on this pilgrimage where uh, uh, foxes have holes. Remember that? Foxes have holes, birds have nests, but the, the Son of Man has, has nowhere to lay his head. And here he is going around following this Jesus, and, and he believes this man is the Messiah. He believes he is the one that's sent forth from God. And here he's about to go back into Judea, and, and, and Thomas said, I am going with you because there is no way that I'm letting you go without me. And there's no part of my life that I will ever like to experience unless you're slap dab in the middle of it, Jesus. So if they kill you, Jesus, they're going to have to kill me. Doubting Thomas. Come on, get real. Doubting Thomas. Really? You Sunday school teachers, change up your curriculum. He is not doubting Thomas. We labeled him without reading it. We labeled him without paying any attention to the struggle that he went through. I want you to look at the pain that he went through. Look at the stuff that he went through. <laughs> so follow a man who says to Jesus, let us also go with you that we may die with him. Follow me with him. As he follows him to the cross, and watch Thomas, watch Jesus being beaten with a cat of nine tails. And watch Thomas, watch him being smite. And watch Thomas, 
watch him get a, a crown of thorns put on his head and 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 and, and Thomas has 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 got to watch all of it and, and and here's what's interesting Thomas knowing that Jesus has the power to at any moment to stop this thing to at any moment stop it and Thomas has already watched him raise Lazarus from the dead so he knows he has power over death Thomas already watched him walk up on Jairus' daughter into her room and, and touch the 12 year old girl by the hand the dead girl by the hand and raise her up and she's back to life again Thomas who had been there when outside of a city called Nain, there was a funeral procession going on for a little boy who they were carrying his casket. But death met life. And when death meets life, death doesn't have a chance. And life stood up and touched the casket. And the boy raised up and Jesus handed the boy to his mother and he came back to life again. Is there any more? in here that got a dead boy or a dead girl. I don't mean dead in the grave. I mean spiritually dead. I mean away from God. I'm going to tell you tonight, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give in. He's still on the throne. He's still in control. He's still raising the dead. Amen. Hallelujah. He's still raising the dead. Hallelujah. So here's Thomas knowing that Jesus had the power to stop this thing, to stop this crucifixion. He could have called all the angels down out of heaven and just obliterated everybody, turned it all to glass like a nuclear bomb going off. Yeah, he could have. Thomas must have stood there staring, waiting, thinking any time he's going to stop this. Any time you don't know who you're messing with. Any time. Any time it's on like Donkey Kong. Any time. Any time he's going to jump down off that cross. As Thomas had already said, if he's dying, I'd just soon be dead too if he's dying. He's everything to me. If he's dying, I'm going with him. And Jesus is on the cross. Eli, Eli, sub to Eli, is what he said. My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? What's Thomas thinking right now? See it with me. Picture it with me. Into thy hands, I surrender my spirit. What's Thomas thinking right now? It is finished. What's Thomas thinking right now? Let's break his legs. No, let's stick a spear in his side. Blood and water come out. What's Thomas thinking right now? What's he thinking right now? What can I do? Leave? Run? What do I got to go back to? What do I really have? What do you do after you spent three and a half years following the Son of God around in the flesh? I want you to think about it. Let us go also that we may die with him. And people go around calling him doubting Thomas. Come on. The pain of the cross, he's seen it. The pain of, of, of the separation. People go around calling him, doubting Thomas. And, and they come to Thomas after the cross and they say, and they say, listen, we, we've seen the Lord. We, 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 we've seen him, Thomas. We've seen him. And Thomas said, uh-uh, nope, nope, nope. I bought into that before. Nope. I'm not buying into it again. 
No, 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 no. I'm not falling for that ever again. I won't buy into that. And I'm, I'm going to do whatever it takes to just build a, around my heart a fortified city. I'm, I'm not letting anything else uh, come near it that I would ever have to feel anything again. I don't want to feel that pain. I don't want to feel that hurt ever again. Nope, nope, uh, nope, I'm not doing it. I've believed for that before. No way. I, listen, I've seen all this revival stuff before and people dancing and saying they was healed before and all that stuff. I've seen all that, but God never really did it in me. I'm not falling for that. I, I'm not falling for that. I heard my mom and dad talk about that stuff, about, about that revival stuff. I, 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 that old stuff, that's old-fashioned stuff. I heard them talking about it. And I'm not falling for that. I'm, I know, no, 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 no. No, no, I'm not letting that touch me and touch my heart. I might get hurt, and I don't want to get, get in near my heart. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm not falling for that. No, 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 no. I don't want to be disappointed again. I, I've got excited and got let down before. People told me that there was revival going on. People told me that people were getting saved. People told me people were getting healed. I got all excited, and, and I'm here just to gauge this thing. I'm here just, I'm the revival police. I'm here to tell you whether it's a real revival or it's not a real revival. <laughs> we ain't got nobody here like that, do we? People let me down, and I'm not going to let anybody near my heart again. And you can't trust preachers. They're after your money. That's all they want. They want your money, you know. And, and I, I was buddies with one before, and, you know, he let me down. He did a bunch of crazy stuff. And, man, he was going around doing some stuff that shouldn't have been done. And I've been wounded by leaders, and I've been wounded by them before. And I found out the pastor one time at my other church was living, living in immorality. So I'm not going to get in and get close, and I, I don't want to get hurt. Come on, come on, come on. So people who have experienced and incredible, incredible pain, they walk into something like this and they don't even know how to let their heart experience a real move of God. Come on, I'm telling you that God wants to do something new. God wants to do something fresh. God wants to do something you've never seen before. If you'll just let your guard down and say, God started me, yes to you, no to that junk, and I'm free from what anybody might say or think. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Woo. <laughs> There's people here that have bought into the lie of the devil that somehow this, 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 this wall that you've built around your heart is protecting you. Mm. In reality, it's robbing you. Woo. Glory. It's robbing you. Here's Thomas. He's, he's, he's standing there watching. He's, he's, he's watching as Jesus hangs on the cross. And, and he leaves there and he says, never again. Nope. Never again. Not giving my heart like this anymore. Never again. People told me I was crazy for following him. People told me this wouldn't last. People told me it wouldn't. Jim, did they tell you it wouldn't last? <laughs> You can bet your bottom dollar that they was waiting and watching, betting, couldn't wait for you to mess up and say, see, I told you he wouldn't make it. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, you've got some people that will root you on and, and love you up and say, come on, you can make it, 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 you can, you can, you can, you can. But I'm going to tell you, you got some others. There's a few out there that's waiting on you. Can't wait for you to mess up. Can't wait for you to trip up so they can say, I told you so. He didn't have the real thing. It wasn't real. <laughs> Whew. Whew. 
So Thomas is... He's heartbroken and he's hurt and he's, he's thinking now he, he's gone, he's left and he could have stopped it, but he didn't. And, and I'm not going down that road again with anyone. I'm not doing that again. I, I'm not getting hurt like this again. I'm not doing it. I got to protect myself. I got to protect my family. I got I to gotta protect myself. And most people don't know the level of pain that Thomas experienced because they don't know the level of commitment that Thomas had. You got to know, you got to know, you got to know that he said, let us go that we may die with him. Because if he's dead, I might as well be dead. Because there's no reason to live without him being here. There's no reason for us to be in here tonight without him being in here. So when Jesus left Thomas, he, Thomas couldn't, couldn't, couldn't just, Thomas couldn't just go back fishing. Later on, Jesus would manifest himself and he manifests himself to the disciples and but the scripture plainly says, Thomas is not with them. Pay attention right here. God's got something for you. Listen to me. It plainly says, Thomas is not with them. Thomas is not with them. Thomas is not with them. Because you got to protect yourself, don't you? Come on, you got you to protect yourself. You've been bought into all this stuff before. You're not going to buy into it again. You was committed to church before. You were involved before. You was on fire before. I mean, on fire. You prayed with people. You was in the altars. You was involved. You was witnessing to people. You was on fire. You come to the prayer meetings. You was the first one here. You got here on Sunday night early to pray for the services. You was on fire. I mean, on fire. He was on fire. You praised him like crazy before. You couldn't wait to dance and to worship and to praise him and to lift your hands and to sing and to cry out to him. You couldn't wait. Ooh. That was before. That was before. Yeah, yeah. But now. But now, but now the church is full of hypocrites. <laughs> the church is full of hypocrites, in case you didn't know, a church is full of hypocrites. Hey, I love it. When I go somewhere, I always ask people what, when I get to talking to people, people I don't know, I'll ask them, what do you think I do for a living? What do you think I do? They never, ever guess it. <laughs> never. Never, they have ne no one has ever guessed it. And I do, hundreds, literally hundreds of times. <laughs> Pastor said, can you blame them? <laughs> Never. And it seems like every single one of them, especially when you get out of this area, They'll say, well, I don't go to church. I say, well, what's up with that, man? You ought to go to church, man. You need to go to church. Well, I don't got to go to church to have a relationship with the Lord. <laughs> I say, well, you're one of them, huh? Yeah, I'm one of them. I hey, listen, you can... You can ask my wife, I tell them, I tell them, I tell them in love, I say, you're deceived, man. You're deceived. You're deceived. You are flat out deceived. And then they'll say, you know what they'll say? They'll say, well, the church is full of hypocrites. It's full of hypocrites. Do you agree that it's full of hypocrites? You're a pastor. I say, well, I guess we need to give you a bozo button. Praise God, you recognize that people are flawed. <laughs> Absolutely, the church is full of hypocrites. So is the restaurant, so is the ball game, so is the wine.
White House, so is the schoolhouse, and so will every other place be until we get on the other side. Last I checked, this was supposed to be a Holy Ghost hospital. Come on, somebody. This is a battleship, not a cruise ship. Hallelujah. I said this is a battleship, not a cruise ship. Come on, somebody. We all got a little hypocrite in us. Let's be real about it. The most honest person I know, nobody likes her because she's not a hypocrite. She tells everybody what she really thinks. We all got a little hypocrite. You like my shirt? If she don't like it, she'll say, that looks like crap. No, I don't like it. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Can we say crap in here? It is what it is. <laughs> crap is crap. And the devil is full of crap. And I'm sick and tired of people acting like the church <laughs> can't be the church. Come on, somebody. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Come on, give God some praise. Some, somebody ought to give God some praise in here. Give him your best praise. Come on back there in the cheap seats. Let's see you give him some praise. Hallelujah. Anybody got any life in them over on this side of the church? Woo! <laughs> they don't ever, ever guess that I'm a preacher. Ever. I don't know if I need to get a new haircut. <laughs> I, I guess I need to dress different. I don't know. <laughs> they don't, I don't talk right, I know. Come on. Whew. Jesus, help us. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Whew. People are flawed, in case you didn't know it. Guess what? So am I. <laughs> yeah. All 5'11 of me. 215 pounds flawed. And so are you. I said, and so are you. You better get the log out of your own eye. Come on. Woo. <laughs> Here's the thing. You were never supposed to be here for the people. People didn't save you. People aren't sitting at the right hand of the Father. Last I check, we come for Jesus. Come on. I said we come for Jesus. We come to church for Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Glory. Holy Ghost. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm baptized in the Holy Ghost. I'll tell you straight up, tongue talking. <laughs> and not just in church. In the middle of the night, in the morning, in the car, in the deer stand, in the duck blind. It don't matter to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Whew. In John chapter 20, and I, and I come to talk to somebody about their disappointment. And by that I mean 
things didn't turn out like you thought they were going to turn out. People told you that once you started following God that everything was just going to be a circus and just everything was going to be grand and it was going to be like going to the fair every day and, and, and uh, you know, Christians don't have problems. And, and so I'm talking to some people who things didn't turn out exactly like you thought they was going to turn out and you've been, you've been going through some stuff and some of you have been sick. I know you've been sick. Some of you have been depressed and some of you have... You've, You've been fearful. Our COVID's been going on. Man, we've had a ton of people be fearful here in the last year. Have we not? Come on. Many of you have had to bury people. And, and some of you have been divorced and several times. And some of you are broke. And this is not supposed to be how it was supposed to be. This is not how it was supposed to turn out. Everybody told me if, if, if I started going to church, it, it'd be different. It wouldn't be this way. And if I served God, I'd be able to skip through the tulips, skip through the daisies and just enjoy life. And He's good and he's good and he is good. But I've been through some things you're saying. I've been through some stuff, and then it's, it's made me wonder. And, there, and, 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 and the reality is that most of us have been through some stuff. And, 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 and the reality is, of, is, is most of us have, have, have been through some stuff that really makes us wonder. Uh, have you ever just wondered, is he, is he really good? Have you really ever well, you been through something so hard and, and, and so trivial and so hard and so rough? I'm talking about you've been through hell. I'm talking about you prayed and you prayed and you pray and you still haven't seen any change and you're wondering God where are you God is he really good if, he, he's, if he's really good then does he really care has anybody ever felt that way come on So we live guarded and we live behind walls and we think we're protecting ourselves but not letting ourselves get fully connected hmm Verse 19, John 20 here, let me, John 20, verse 19. Then that same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and he stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. Mm. Peace be with you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thomas had missed some stuff. He, 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 he missed the breath of God. He missed the commissioning of heaven and the infilling of the Holy Spirit and that would enable a bunch of ordinary men to shake the whole world and just turn the whole world upside down with the power that Jesus is alive. And he missed it because he was protecting himself. And see, here's the thing. A lot of people's criticism is fear that, 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 that is really criticism that fear that this really might cost you something. That you might get involved in this and taste that it's real and you might have to go home and you might have to rearrange your lifestyle. You might have to throw your beer away out of your refrigerator. <laughs> Help us, God. Help us, Lord. So it's just easier to criticize. It's easy. It's easy. Just, just criticize and find fault, not get involved. Just don't get involved. Just criticize it. Criticize it. 
criticize it. Let's get negative, 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 negative. Listen, this isn't perfect. But it's God. It's the way he designed it. It's the church. It's the church. It's still the most powerful thing on earth. It's the church. The church of Jesus Christ. It's the church. The blood-bought, spirit-filled, Holy Ghost-powered church of the living God. It's not perfect. And somebody needs to make up their mind tonight. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Romans says you go against the grain, you're going to get the splinter. Some of you look like a porcupine and you're wondering why. Woo! Just criticize everything. Let's just, let's just put a wall up around the heart. Just miss out again. Just miss out one more time. Just miss out on another revival. Just miss out on another move of God. Just miss out on another good church service. Just miss out and miss out and miss out. I'm going to tell you something. I was in this very church one night. I'm going to tell you, you don't ever know when it's your last church service. A guy named Carl Bashillian. Carl Bashillian come to this altar. He was a stone cold sinner. Had spent most of his life in prison. He come down to the altar and he got born again and filled with the Holy Ghost all in one night. And he come up to me and three or four others and he said, I just want to serve God. I just, man, I just feel so good. I've never felt like this in my life. I just want to serve God. I don't own nothing. I just got out of prison, but I got a pickup truck. Do y'all need, the church need me to haul anything? The church need me to do anything? Does the church need me to pick anybody up and bring them to church? I just want to get involved. I just feel so good. I've had a wall up all my life, been in and out of prison, played a tough guy all my life, and man, it feels so good to be out of this yoke. It it feels so good to be free. It feels so good. And he got saved, man. He got born again. I mean radically born again. And it was amazing because I got to witness it. But you know, the very next day, about noon the next day, he went to visit his brother to tell his brother what God had done in his life. And his brother shot him in the belly with a shotgun and killed him. That was Carl's very last church service here on earth. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, when Carl, <laughs> when Carl drew his last breath on this earth, he woke up in the presence of Almighty God. And I believe, hallelujah, hallelujah. God's still able. I'm going to tell you something, somebody. Somebody knows somebody. They think. See, you get to thinking. You get double-minded. You better get in the Word. You better, it better line up with the Word. My Word still says that His hand is not shortened, that His arm is not shortened, that He cannot say. My, 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 my Word still tells me that if he'd be lifted up, that he would draw all men unto him. I'm going to tell you, sometime or another, you may think you know somebody that's too hard-hearted. They're going to have the opportunity. The Spirit is going to move on them and draw them to the cross. It may be one time. It may be one time, but it'll happen. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. And I'm so glad that Carl made the right decision that day. Woo! When we think church is not important. Come on, somebody, if that don't set you on fire to think about that. Woo! 
Glory to God. There may be another Carl in here tonight. There may be another Carl watching my live stream. Whew. Let us also go that we might also die with him. Jesus dies. Y'all know the story. <laughs> Peter says, I go fishing. He gets the boys and says, hey, boys, let's go. We're going fishing. I got a brand new ranger. <laughs> 200 horse, Evan Rude. Yeah. Woo. We're getting away from it all. We're going fishing. And they leave out. And they go fishing. But Thomas, he wasn't with them. Because I'm going to tell you something now. Thomas wasn't in it for everybody else. Thomas, listen now, listen. Thomas wasn't in it to have a bunch of fishing buddies. Come on, somebody. Thomas wasn't in it to have a bunch of fishing buddies. Thomas was in it because he loved him. He didn't care about hanging out with the boys. He cared about Jesus. Thomas was in it. But he was in it for Jesus. Whew. I love you, Pete, but your talking doesn't do what it did when Jesus talked. You're pretty good, Peter. You're pretty anointed. I, 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 I got to say, Peter, you, when you Lay off the cussing. You can pretty well get with it. But, but you just don't do for me what Jesus does for me. Sorry, John. It was being with him when I felt the love. I felt the love. What, where's it at now? What's happened to it now? Where is it now, John? Where is the power now, John? Where did it go? I felt it when I was with him, but I don't feel it anymore. Where's the love now, John? Where's the power now, John? Where's the encounter now? And I've built a wall. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure that I never, ever experience this pain ever again. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm done. I'm, 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 going to keep, I'm going to keep loving him. I'm going to keep loving him. I'm going to make heaven. I'm going to keep on loving him. But, 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 I, but I'm, just, I'm not going to experience this pain again. I'm not going to do it. I know he's real. But you're not going to convince me he's alive. No, 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 no. Mary Magdalene, she comes and she says that he's alive. Come on, Mary Magdalene, she had seven devils in her. Really? Come on, if Pete would have come to me and told me, come on, I might have believed it. But not Mary, not Mary Magdalene. He chose Mary. He chose, come on, he chose Mary. <laughs> Listen. He chooses all of us, but you got to choose him back. Come on, somebody. you got to choose him back. He's picking you, 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 you. Hey, hey over there, you, you. But what you going to do? What you going to do? Somebody in here tonight is going to choose him back. <laughs> I'm going to choose him back. Whew. Really what he's wanting to know today is who picks me? I pick you, but who picks me? Who picks me? 
Who wants to stay with me? Who, 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 who picks me? John chapter 20, verse 24. And Thomas called the twin was not with them when Jesus came. Whew. The other disciples said therefore to him, we have seen the Lord. So he said to them, unless I See, in his hands, the print of his nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. That wasn't doubt talking. That was pain talking. That was disappointment talking. That was betrayal but talking. I'm not doing that again. I'm not going there again. Don't even say that to me because I'm being hurt. And while you were all together out fishing, I was constructing a wall. I was putting a wall around my heart. Never, never, never again, never again. I'm going to love God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to heaven. I'm going to make heaven. But I never will I buy in again. Never will I buy in. Not again, never again. It's not happening. Watch what happens here. Watch what happens. I love this. Except I see the point of the nails in his hands. Put my finger in the print of the nails. Touch his side. I won't believe. Look how far he goes here. Look how far he goes. I want to feel what I saw. You know, prove it. This hurts bad, God. Prove it. Look at verse 26. After eight days, again, his disciples were within. And I love these next few words. And Thomas was with them. And Thomas was with them. Mm. I'm hurting so bad. Come on, somebody. It's somebody's testimony. But, 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 but if there's a chance, somebody's here tonight, you're hurting, but you're here. You've been through hell times 10, but, you, but you're here. Come on. And you're saying, if there is a chance that this is real, if there is a, this is a chance that there's, there's, there's really a revival going on, if there's, this is really a chance that there's really a move of God happening, if, if there's a chance that God is really delivering people, is really breaking down barriers, is really healing people, is really saving people, is really filling people with the Holy Ghost, is really, really doing it, if there's a chance that I'm going to hang around, I'm just going to hang around, I'm going to hang around over here. I'm going to hang around over here by the wall. I'm going to stand over here. I'm going to stand back. I'm going to stand over here and smile. I'm, I'm not going to jump. I'm not going to dance. I'm not going to shout. I'm going to stand over here, and I'm going to watch a little bit. I'm going to just watch what's going on, and I'm going to stand over here, over here against the wall, and I'm going to make sure my wall is just solid, and, 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 and I'm thinking that y'all are emotional. Y'all are just too emotional for me. Y'all are a little bit, just kind of a little bit radical, and you're a little bit emotional. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we are a little bit emotional, all right. We may even be a little bit crazy by the world standards. We may even be a little bit wild. I'm going to tell you why we're wild and why we're crazy. If you could see where I came from, if you could see what God brought me out of, if you could see, hallelujah, what God is able to do. <laughs> Woo, take that, devil. Take that. Take that, devil. Woo. Jill, stand up. Stand up right there, Jill. 
Sorry to put you on the spot. See that lady right there? She had a, one of her ears was deaf. Been deaf in it for 20-something years. We laid hands on her and prayed for her and pop. It opened up and she can hear. I'm going to tell you something and I don't make you shout if that don't make you get a little bit emotional. Then I'll tell you one thing. You got something. You got a screw loose. This stuff is real. This is real. Come on, somebody. The Holy Ghost is real. The healing power is real. The blood of God is real. The cleansing power of Jesus is real. Oh, he wants to radically, radically, I'm talking about it. He wants to radically get a hold of somebody radically. He wants to set you on fire tonight. That's what he wants to do. Woo! Some of you. Come on, let God use you. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. 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 Jesus, can you just lift your hands right now to heaven? Jesus. Lord, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness, Lord. Thank you for your love that is everlasting, eternal. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise team, y'all make your way back up here. I'm going to try to wrap it up. And Thomas was with them. I love that. And Jesus came and I thought he only came because of faith, Sean. (laughs) Woo! 
But right here, he was moved by pain. <laughs> well, Thomas, he's, he's with him, and Jesus came, although the doors were shut, and Jesus stood in their midst, and he said, peace be to you. So does that sound familiar? You go back to verse 19. And it said, Thomas was not there. Jesus came and stood in their midst. And the doors were shut and said, peace be with you. And then verse 26, Jesus came, the doors being shut, and saying, peace be with you. Does it sound familiar? It happened twice. The first time Thomas wasn't there. But it says this time Thomas was there. Come on, somebody. I love this because Jesus hit the rewind button because he refused for a man so messed up and so locked up in pain to miss it one more time. Whew. Jesus. Whoo. Oh. Are you going to miss it again? You going to miss it again? Will you miss it again? You going to miss it again? miss it again Whew. you ever had a really bad thing happen you ever had a bad thing a marriage fall apart a molestation in your family I mean bad stuff I mean bad stuff abused heartache disappointment stuff going on you had to ask yourself what's going on this has hurt me don't you Never again. I'm putting a wall up. I'm not letting anybody in again. I'm, 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 I'm. Never again. Never again. Whew. What we got to understand is as long as we're living in this world, in this life, there's a little something that takes place called life. And we don't always have control of everything. And we don't even always understand everything. But I can assure you, just like the song that we sing, he is always faithful. And you may not even see it right now. And he may be three days late, but he is always on time. Always on time. He may not come when you want him to, but he'll show up when he needs to be there. I'm going to tell you, God is so proficient at taking what the devil meant for bad and turning it for good. Come on, somebody. Keep Joseph out of the pit. Keep Joseph out of the pit. No, I, 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 I can't. I can't. Got to let him go to the pit so he'll know how to behave in the palace. Come on. Somebody's about to come out. Whew. Listen, sometimes <laughs> these pastors can, can give witness to this. A lot of times we're not dancing because everything is great and everything is grand. <laughs> A lot of times we're dancing to let the enemy know that the story is not over yet. Come on. Somebody needs to get a jig going just to let the enemy know, <laughs> hey, I'm not dancing because everything is grand. I'm just dancing to let him know that it ain't over. Jesus is still going to show. He's walking through walls. Mark, I said he's walking through walls. There ain't no wall when revival hits. <laughs> there ain't no wall that he can't come through if he wants to come through it. You can't stop him. <laughs> he's coming through walls. 
He's coming through walls. He's coming through walls. Somebody needs to two-step their self all the way down here to this front just to show the devil that it ain't over till God says that it's over. Come on. I know the sky looks empty, but I'm going to keep looking till I see a cloud the size of a man's hand. Hallelujah. It ain't over until God says it's over. He's walking through walls. I wish I could get a witness. Won't he walk through a wall? Won't he come in and get you? Won't he show up in the nick of time? Friends can leave you and go fishing, but he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. When he comes, he comes because he means business. Isn't it funny that he told Mary when he seen her after the resurrection, Mary, you can't touch me yet. But he told Thomas, here you go. Put your hand right here. You got to touch me. I'm going to tell you tonight that somebody's got to touch him. Before you leave this place, you got to stick your hand out and you got to get a hold of him tonight because he's got business to do with you. I don't know who you are, but you're in this place. And God say, touch me. Come on. Come on. You need to get down here. He's walking through walls. You need to get down here. Will you miss it again? Will you go to the car again tonight without getting what you need? I don't know if it's your last night or not. Oh. But praise be to God, he's given us another opportunity. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. I said he's walking through some walls. I'm glad I got a God that can walk through some walls. Woo. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody else ready to do business with God? Anybody else need a touch tonight? Anybody else need a fresh infilling of the Holy Ghost tonight? Anybody here tonight that wants a touch, a fresh touch, and get yourself down here right now? God's not done. He, for my fact, God's just starting. Hallelujah. Come on, 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 praying people. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, saints. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hungry people. Come on, 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 come on. He's walking through walls. He's tearing stuff down. I don't care what you built. I don't care if the door is even shut. He'll kick the door open or he'll walk right through it. In Jesus' name, he's here tonight to destroy some things. He's here tonight. Tonight, woo!